Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to change the brake pads and brake rotors on a Subaru Brumby 89 model. This is the part number of the pads. This is the part number of the rotors. Before doing your brakes, remember to open your brake fluid reservoir. I'm going to be putting a stand underneath just in case the jack comes down. Got the handbrake on while I do this. Gotta undo. Well, apparently the handbrake isn't gonna hold it, but I have to undo all four of them bolts and undo the center, take this off. Pull the handbrake on a bit harder. That did it. You need to take the pin out. Get it started with the pliers with the um, screwdriver, then get it out with the pliers. The four bolts around the outside are 14 mil, the castle nut in the middle. It's a 36 mil. Which I should have undone with the wheel still on and the wheel on the ground. I've got the wheel on and on the ground. Undo the castle nut now. Jack it back up and put the stand back underneath. Now take the handbrake off, undo the brake caliper, there's a bolt at the top and one at the bottom. I'll just see if I can get the camera in there to show you. That's the top one there. And that's the bottom one.
both bolts in behind here that hold the brake caliper on are 17 mil. They're both the same. You'll need a bigger Phillips head screwdriver. Just screw down inside there. This is the front piece over your four wheel drive selector. It has a push stud there. So undo that to slide it off. Underneath, two clips at the front, one at the back. There is supposed to be two screws here. This one doesn't have it. They've been lost somewhere along the line. So once you take that off, you have access to the two screws there. That's where the two front screws go. And then you've got the other screw inside there. And the handbrake adjustment. It's just there. It's two nuts have a 10 mil nut and a 12 mil nut you can see it moving there so I need to hold the 12 mil nut while I undo the 10 mil nut and then you adjust the 12 mil nut to where you want it to be and then you hold the 12 mil nut while you tighten the 10 mil nut onto it holds it in place too hard to hold the camera there while I do it so that's the 12 mil just hold that there 10 mil on there hold the 12 mil under the 10 okay, just loosen off the 10 mil and then adjust the 12 mil how you want it So because I'm changing the brake pads and the handbrake is connected to the front brakes, I need to undo this 12 mil to loosen off the handbrake on the rotors. So that way I can get the brake pads out. There's the handbrake adjustment. I have loosened that off. So now the Handbrake doesn't take up at all. The little spring there is loose. Handbrake's off all the way down and the adjustment is loosened off. So now I should be able to get the brake pads in. I've got a piece of tie wire so I can tie the brake caliper up so it's not hanging on the brake line.
put that onto there. Take the nut off. The washer. Get the pull onto that. You could probably get it off if you tap it with a hammer or a mallet, but I'm going to use a puller because I have one and I usually find it easier. Each of these bolts have a um, spring washer on them. There's the old rotor. There's the new one. I'm going to give this a little bit of a clean up. So no dirt gets between the two surfaces. Well, because I have access to the bearing there, I'm going to put some grease in there. Let's put a little bit of grease around here as well. There is a seal there, I don't want, don't want to damage it. And just wipe all the grease off your hands before you handle the rotor. They're only finger tight at the moment. And that is, that is only finger tight at the moment as well. We have the new pads. That's the outer pad. Which is the same as that one. Hardly anything left on that one. That's the inner pad. The inner pad has a little nodule on it. Which is there. your slots into the piston because the piston is meant to rotate to get it to go back you can't push these ones apart you need to screw it in now to screw this back in you can use long nose or needle nose pliers 
get them in there and just turn it. Which can be awkward to do. Or this is a tool for an angle grinder. There is a proper tool for the job, I don't have it. Be careful that you don't get your finger caught in the pliers when they slip because as you can see they do slip a lot. I'm just trying to turn the turn it with the pliers enough to get the grinder tool back in there. because the grinder tool is a lot easier. So hopefully that's far enough. Got to make sure that the two slots are lined up. Left side and right side are written on the pads. I've wound that in a couple of turns now. Now these both have the little R on them for right and this is the one with the little bump on it to lock into that piston. So the flat side matches up with the flat side on there making sure that the pad side is out and the plate side with that little bump on it is in the back. So I push that side in first and then the little metal bit, slide that in, push it into place. Same with this one, make sure it's the right side. The flat side goes out, the curved side goes in. tabs here to pull out and slot in. Usually if you get one side in the other side just slips in like that. And that should just slip over the your rotor. If it doesn't go over your rotor you need to screw that piston in a bit more.
once you get that lined up, you screw your bolts back in. If your bolt doesn't go in, you don't have the hole lined up. Make sure the spring washers are on these. That one's not screwing in, so I don't have the hole lined up. Sometimes it helps to put an Allen key through the hole to get it lined up. Just seem to be finger tight, so give it a good pull and a wiggle, make sure it's on. I'm only doing these up firm at the moment. I'm doing a tighten one and then have it sitting crooked. Both firm. And they're not tightened properly yet. These bolts are the front caliper anchor bolts. The torque is 69 Norton meters. So I'll get this in there. That one's not there yet. Put some pressure on the bottom one. Bottom one's there. And the top one's there. I'm going to check the bottom one again just in case. Good. These bolts are 58 newton meters. I'm doing opposites the best I can on these. And not over tightening one while the rest of the rest are loose. I've got the car in first gear. So it doesn't rotate while I'm doing this. Checking them all again. Yep, all good. This castle nut needs to be one hundred and ninety six Newton meters. So I'm going to put the wheel back on, put it down on the ground and get it up to that. Just make sure it's reasonably tight first.
so at least it's sitting on there properly and not um, sitting out a bit when I put it on the ground. I'll get the stand out, we'll let the car down. Now because this socket is so big, I need to use an adapter for the torque wrench. That is the adapter I'll be using. Now I've got to make sure I can get the new pin through. I like to try and use a new pin for these, but I don't have one this big at the moment, so I'll use this one for now, and I'll put a new one in it later. Just need to straighten it enough to get it through. That's one side. Now for the other side. Just like on the other side, I have to undo the wheel nuts. So they're just loose. And before I jack it up, I'm going to loosen the center nut. Take out the pin. Now loosen the castle nut. Just makes it a bit easier to do them steps while it's on the ground. Now I'll jack it up and put a stand under there. Now usually what happens is the rim will get stuck on the center parts of the hub. So you need something to pry that off. It didn't happen on the other side, but it's happening on this side. Just like that. Now I'm going to loosen the four bolts there. Now this time, because I've got the handbrake loosened off because I did the other side first, I've got it in first gear and low four wheel drive. Stop it from turning. Oh, that works better than having the handbrake on anyway. Now I'm going to loosen the two bolts that hold the brake caliper on.
They're the same two that I showed on the other side. Piece of wire or something to hold your brake caliper up. I'm just hooking that onto the spring. Just to hold that out of the way. Do these. And the castle nut. So I want to come off without using the puller. Now I need to separate the two of them. And just pull apart. And I'll give that a clean up, ready for the new rotor to go on. Just like on the other side, I'm going to take the opportunity to put some fresh grease in here. And here's the new rotor for this side. The other side was dry. This side had quite a bit of oil on it, so I just gave it a wipe with a rag. Don't want oil getting into the brake pads. So there's that cleaned up and ready to go on to here. Line up the holes. Put the bolts in. Right there, finger tight. That's what it looks like from the other side. Castle nut, some finger tight. I'm going to get the old pads out. This one just fell out as I pulled it off. But see that one's right down to the metal. Just like on the other side, I need to screw that piston in. This is a bit hard to do with the camera in the way, so I'll move the camera and then um, screw the piston in. Now that the piston is screwed in, I can put the pads in. Just the same as on the other side, the one with a little bump locks into the piston. And it says that it's the left one. Same with that, it says it's the left. They actually say left, and that this one's it out, the other one says in.
this side wanted to be a little more difficult than the other side probably because the um, brakes were worn out more it's on there now and just to line these bolts up I've just put an 8mm allen key in the top hole try and make it a bit easier to put the bottom bolt in the hole it's the bottom bolt in the hole now I'll take the allen key out put the top bolt in just like the other side this has to be tightened to 69 newton meters there we go just make sure the bottom one again there we go and just like the other side there's the 58 Ooh, 58 newton meters now i'm going to put the wheel back on just the same as the other side i'll tighten them up when it's on the ground to make sure this has got some strain on it Now I'll put it down and tighten it all properly. Now I just have to tighten the castle nut. And just like the other side, the castle nut has to be 196 Newton meters. There we go. And check for the pinhole. A little bit more to allow for the pin. Give the pin a bend. Just like that. When you finish doing your brakes, don't forget to put the lid on your brake reservoir. Now you have to make sure you're in neutral. Start the car. And pump the brakes up. The reason you start the car first is because the brakes run off the vacuum. Now we just need to tighten the handbrake. You need to tighten the 12mm nut. If you're lucky you can get some of this done with your fingers. I've got the handbrake on the first click so I can get to the nut a little bit easier. Okay, that feels about right. Now I'm holding the 12mm nut and turning the 10mm nut. Bring that into the 12 mil, and then while holding the 12 mil, tighten the 10 mil. That'll lock that in place. I need to put this back together. Do it on there like that. One screw down in there, and the two screws in the front, which I don't have. So make sure all three screws are in before you tighten them down. I only have the one screw, so I'll just tighten that. Make sure the little push stud is open. So you can slide that back on. Put that back into place. Do up the button. There you go, handbrakes adjusted. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.